Greetings, my fellow humanoid dwellers. I create videos on technology and other random things. If you like this video, you might like others. If you don't like this video, you still might like others. Consider subscribing to my channel or checking out my Patreon page. If you already subscribe, hit that bell. In the last video, we used PHP to pull the data in and display it in a web page. In this video, we're going to tie four files together, a CSS file, an HTML file, a JavaScript file, along with that PHP file we created in the last video. Using HTML is a more standard way of doing it. The only file that we'll open in the browser will be the HTML file, and through that file we'll link to all the other files. We'll be able to use JavaScript to manipulate the PHP to pull the data from the server. I'm going to leave the PHP file pretty much the way it was when we left off. We have the file location that points to that same file in the last video. We're going to open it in a read-only manner, and then we're going to read the contents, and then we're going to close the file. In the last video I had an error and I had the file location in here instead of the file. Um, I've corrected that in this one. We're going to echo the file contents, put a BR tag, we're going to echo the length of the file contents, and then we're going to go ahead and echo out the, the value itself. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have a directory somewhere on your computer in your My Documents. It doesn't matter where it is, but just put the four files in a one single directory. And you're going to name each file the same name with a different extension. So one will be pytemp, pytemp.css. One will be pytemp.html. One will be pytemp.js, and then one will be pytemp.php. This pytemp.php is the same as temperature.php. Oh, the other thing is I am using an actual um, code editor this time. It really is just a text editor that highlights the code in a certain way and also can autocomplete. So, like if you type in something, it will it will try and guess what you think you want it to be, and if it if it pops up correctly, you can hit tab first um, file is just going to be simply an HTML file. I'm not going to do this in a standard way. If, if you're an actual HTML coder or a web designer, you're probably going to be a little bit bothered. I just want to be able to pull data from the Pi and display it on a website. Over time we will get a little bit more specific, but just to start with, we're just going to put some simple HTML down and get it to work. First thing we're going to do is we're going to link to the style sheet. You use a link tag. If you remember the tags are what are in between the less than and greater than signs. Anything in between there won't display on the page. It will treat it as something that it needs to interpret. I mean, in this case, it's a link to a separate file. And the type of file is a style sheet. And the href is the name of the of the sheet. And in this case, it's pi temp. And you can see that the auto completes there, so I can just hit tab. And then we're going to put two sections on this page. One is going to be a button that in the future will click to update the temperature. And the other one is going to be a section that is going to display the temperatures. And we're going to give each section a separate ID. We'll call this one the button. And the nice part about some editors, it auto completed and it gave me that section again. Now I'm going to cut and paste this. And we're going to call this one temps for the temps. Because this will be the section that will populate the temperatures in. And then we also have to point to the JavaScript file itself, the JS file. That's how the HTML will know that those files exist, both the CSS and the JavaScript file. The JavaScript file will then point to the PHP file. You have to give the source in this one. Up here in a link file, it's the reference to the thing. In a source file, or in a script file, it's a source. And it, it just points to the, uh, to the file, the JavaScript file. I use my down arrow key to get that. And then it closed it for me. And that's really all there is to that page. So now if we go over to... oh. And this is locally on this machine now, so I have to use my FTP program to transfer the files over. So if I go to my FileZilla, and I take these four files, and I copy them over to the Raspberry Pi. I've already logged into the Raspberry Pi. 
So now I've uploaded those to the Raspberry Pi. Now if I go to the browser, I should be able to type in pytemp.html and I don't think we'll actually see anything, but it shouldn't give me an error. I'm not actually showing anything on the data. It just got the script tag, the link tag, and two empty boxes. So in order for us to be able to see those boxes, we're going to go ahead and um, do a little styling. And we're going to refer to the section right here. You can refer to things in different ways. You can refer to this, the section, or you could refer to the ID. But in this case, we're going to refer to the section. And when we're referring to a tag name itself, you can just write that in. So in this case, it's section. And then anything between the curly braces is going to apply to that section. We're going to display it as inline block. We're going to position it relative. We're going to give it a width of 100%. So that way it will fill the screen right to left. We're going to give it a height of 200 pixels. And now we're going to define the border. You can do the border in a shortcut with the word border, but I'm going to go ahead and use the three lines so it makes it a little more obvious. And give it a width of two pixels. And we have to give it a style. We'll just call it solid. And we're going to save this file. And remember, when you save it on here, you still have to go to your your file and uh, to your FTP and upload it. And then we go here and we'll refresh and we should see two boxes. This one up here is called button. This one down here is called temps. Now we're going to go to the uh, JavaScript portion of it. We're going to use something called Ajax to go and get the data from the PHP. And Ajax is just a term. It's a way of doing it without having to refresh your browser. Normally, when you want to make a change to your browser, you have to hit the refresh button to reload the page. Well, this does it in the background, so you don't have to do that. Um, there's no simple way to describe this. You're just going to have to type it in, and after a while, you'll, get, you'll just get used to it. So in, in JavaScript, you have to define things as constants, as variables, as things that can change and things that can't. Constants cannot change, whereas a, a variable, or a, what they call a let, can change. First thing we're going to do is we're going to define a constant. And this is an object. We're going to call this one my Ajax request. You could call this anything you want. You could call it bill. You could call it dog. You could call it anything. But since this is a request and we're using Ajax technology, I'm going to call it. And then built into it, built into JavaScript is something called an XML HTTP request. And this is the object that actually does all the work. So you're just saying, I want one of those objects, and it's going to be called my Ajax request. And the first thing we're going to do with this is we're going to open it. And in the web world, there's a couple different types of requests. One is a get, and one is a post. And we're going to use a get. And this is where we tell it, this is where we link it to the PHP file. So we're going to get data from the pytemp.php. And this last variable, just type it in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tell this request or this JavaScript that we're creating, what to do after data is returned. So after, and they call it loading the data. So on load, we're going to have it run another function. We're just going to call it new function. And the last part of this is we have to actually send the request. And by doing those three lines, what we've done is we've started a request in the background to open that PHP file and echo. Remember we had echo, it would send the data to the screen. Well now instead of sending it to the screen, it's going to send it back to this JS file. So now we have to create that function. And in this function, we have to do some checking. Once we sent that request, that on load is going to prompt this new function to run at different points, like as it's processing the data. And we want it once the data is ready. So we have to check the status. So it's just myAjaxRequest.status. And we want to know when it's equal to 200. 
So when the status is 200, which means that the data has been returned, we want it to do something. What we want to do is we want to go back to the HTML document. We want to get a certain element by its ID, and that's that temps box, that box that has the ID of temps. And then we want to change its inner HTML. We want to make it equal to that request dot response text. So the response text is what is being sent back. So what we have here is we're opening the the pytemp.php file. When after data has been returned, we're going to run this, and then this is what starts the process. Then we're going to wait for the data to be completely returned, which is this, and once it's returned, then we're going to write whatever is responded back to the web page. So now we're going to go back to our FTP transfer, and I want to make sure that I have them all, so I'm going to grab all of them and just overwrite what's there. And now when we go to this, if we hit refresh, we should have our data, and we do not. So I've typed something wrong somewhere. We're going to go back to the code and take a quick look and see if we can figure out what it is. It's usually something in the JS file, in the JavaScript file, and I might have misspelled onload. The JavaScript world case is very, very important, and I had a capital L in the onload. So hopefully that got it. I need to upload the files. And refresh the page. And there we go. We've got the data, just like we were seeing in the other one. In the next video, we're going to make it so if we click this box up here, it will cause this data to update. Video, we created an HTML file. We linked it to a CSS file and a JavaScript file. We used the JavaScript file to call the PHP file and then return the data. We also used the JavaScript file to then populate the HTML file. And that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching.